Hello everyone, it's Jay Webs again. Uh, by decently popular demand, uh, everyone wanted to get a kind of a tutorial on how to make the blackjack machine, or at least my version of it. Uh, once again, it's not perfect, and I am quite new to this whole recording and video editing, which I have no video editing skills or public speaking skills, so I apologize for the uh, extreme amount of us and uh, stuttering but uh, we'll go ahead and start with the uh, the beginning part of the build here which um, I'm not sure what you call this um, I just call it a ticker um, I don't know if there's a name for this sort of thing here but uh, we'll go ahead and uh, get started with it so on any of these uh, that has a timer below it or sorry a, a branch that has a timer above it um, it's going to be a I, I have factored it out to be uh, to branch off to eight. So eight seems to make this run properly, and then uh, the values will stay normal on any of the powers. So first off, we're gonna power up to this timer, and then up to the uh, blocker, and then the last one will go up here to the counter, and then the output of the timer will go up into the branch. And before we put anything else together here, we're going to set <coughs> this to 0 0.5. And that'll make it so it moves a little bit quicker on the counting. One second seems to take a little bit too long. I even actually usually set this to 0.35. Sorry, 0.35. That way it'll move along pretty quickly. Um, so the first branch out of the branch on the left that the timer went into, I bring around down into this XOR switch. And then the power out of the left branch goes into the next branch, in which the power out of the right branch will go into the increment counter of the uh, counter. And then the branch I'll show here in a second, the power, the pass through of the counter, once it gets to a certain uh, time that you set, or a certain count that you set, will go on to the other end of this XOR switch, and then the power out of the XOR will then go to the block pass through, and then the power out of the blocker will go to the top. Now, um, this is set to 10. I generally set this one to, um, sorry, wrong button there. Uh, set this one to 21, uh, you know, the blackjack number, but also it seems to be just enough to get uh, all these our RAN switch counters to find. So now this, so I'm kind of doing this uh, on improv. I tried to uh, um, get a little bit of it hooked up to, uh, kind of cut down on the time of this video, but so the branch out is actually going to go to an AND switch. So we're going to need an AND switch on this, put it in the one side of the AND switch, and then um, go ahead and uh, set this branch out that I've had right here. And I set this branch to 20 because I accounted for the one power that the end switch takes, the two power that the uh, branch takes, and then each switch, or sorry, splitter, will take one power, and then it also needs to power every single, uh, uh, give one power to every single set of the uh, RAN switches. So go ahead and pull the branch out to the end switch. And then we're going to kind of pull the power out of the end switch into that branch. And then now all the pulses will come through um, and power each one of these. So I did the majority of them, but uh, I always put it for 10. I always do a branch and then uh, four splitters. So nine on the splitters and then one off the branch. So you're then going to run this one off this branch, and the branch can just remain at two. It'll come up, and we'll 
go ahead and run it into the first one here. I'm trying to make this as, uh, I guess, neat, <laughs> if you want to call it that, as possible. And that'll come up into this first set. And then we'll go ahead. I usually run, to try and make it uh, somewhat uniform, I always start with the last and move up to the first. And that should make it so you aren't crossing wires every which way to make it a little bit more uh, easy to manage, at least so you can debug the system if it's not working properly. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, follow suit with uh, these next wires here. Like again, they're uh, going to the set option on the remaining switches. So you'll see it on the side here, set. So now you'll do that 10 times and make sure that they're coming to the set options on the RAND switches. And then uh, make sure everything's powered. So um, everything should run properly, uh, except for the, I think the only ones you'll need to change are the counters. So give me one second here, I'm going to go ahead and run power up here, to the RAND, and then go ahead and run power up to counter, once again, power up to the wind, and then run power up to the counter. I'm going to do this a total of 10 times. I'm just going to show you three of them here. Okay, now uh, make sure that you run the RAND power out up to the increment counters. So, power out of RAND and increment counter above the RAND. And so every time that the RAND uh, picks green, it'll, it'll show on the increment counter. And then from, you'll be doing the power out of the, the counter itself into the branch above. So I already did all these right here. And then I set each one of these counters, set the value for five. So on every single counter above the RAND switch, you set it to five. I'm not sure if you're familiar with uh, counters, but once the increment or decrement, whatever you have it set to, hits the, the magic number, um, it will pass through power and it will not pass through power until that number is hit. So we set all those to five. Now I do believe I'm gonna have to, uh, to modify these counter uh, branches to be able to, because you get one, one power for the counter and then it's gonna need to send a power. So I think we're gonna need a total of three power. Um, we'll, we'll set the the counter powers, we'll, we'll go ahead and be safe and set it to four. So set each one of the uh, powers to the counter of the branch, set the branch to four. should have enough power to pass through. So you can keep this the same because uh, two is plenty. Um, so what I do is I branch out of each one into an XOR switch. And this is just a daisy chain effect. So it'll be branch out into XOR. So both sides branch out and then this one goes to here. So the, the top of this will go over to the next XOR switch. Same here, then it goes back to here. So two branches into XOR, then two XORs into an XOR, and then two more XORs into another XOR, which then the very first XOR plus the, the all the XORs combined will go into one until eventually you get all the XORs chained together until you got one. So make sure you chain all these branches 
uh, branch outs to an XOR and chain the XORs together until you get one. And then that is essentially going to be the blocking mechanism. So that means um, when this activates, it'll essentially, um, it'll randomly tick up until it hits five and whichever one of these circuits wins the race to five will send a pulse out to one of these XOR switches and then it'll daisy chain all the way through until it gets to this one. This one, you're going to run over to the block past of the blocker. So this will essentially block all the other uh, pulses coming in so none of the other uh, RAN switches can tick up anymore. So once a number wins, it keeps any other number from from uh, being able to uh, pulse up to five. So that goes to the block pass through. So now I'm going to show you um, exactly how we're going to do this next part here. So that blocks it, and then boy, I may have screwed up. One second here. Okay. Okay, I did screw up. Alright, so these aren't going to the RAN switches. These are the query. This is the query mechanism. So just bear with me here. So these are the ones going to the sets. So we're going to go ahead and redo that here. So this one is the one that's going to the set. Okay, so this will run now to this end switch. And then the power out, like I said, you want to set this to 20 to here and then so when that starts to pulse this will activate on every pulse because it's an AND switch so it won't activate just randomly and then it's going to come down into the bottom of the blocker and then the power out goes to your branch right here that first branch out went to the first set here and the rest came through these splitters and then just make sure that the rest of your power out goes into the power into the splitter. So now we should get a mock repre representation of if I activate this or let me put a little counter clear here. Now those pulses should go ahead yep, yep So now it's working on the the RAN switches, and it actually had uh, three pass-throughs, but still, it, it, as soon as the very first millisecond one gets through, it'll block all the others. So sometimes you can set it up to maybe like a 7 or an 8, depending on uh, how easily multiple ones are hitting on it. Like I said, there's probably a better method of doing this. But like I said, I'm not a programmer, and I'm also not an electrician, so this is just my take on it, and I'll prove on it uh, in the future, but uh, this is like version 2. So now that we have the, the set set up, we need a way to clear all of these. So when you press that button, it needs to be able to clear this one and also all of these so they can start over again. So that's what I have this one actually set up for that we messed up in the first place. So we're going to go ahead and run this first one over. I'm trying to be as neat as I can, but uh, sometimes when you have so many wires running places, it's kind of hard to do that. But yeah, you're putting this into the clear counter. And then we're going to go ahead and run this one to the next clear counter.
but okay. So now we'll kind of uh, start this over, but uh, eventually that's going to be our little little dealer and uh, player area that I kind of set up. But essentially, when you press this button, it's it's going to clear this counter and also all ten of these counters. And so now the next step is uh, it was going to take forever to run all this over here, so I went ahead and did the majority of them. So you're running the output. Okay, so you're running the output of these the power outs of these branches. So you ran the first branch to the blocker. Now the second one is actually telling it what to do. So um, I, I ran all the the last five, I believe, but I'll show you these these next three. But essentially you're going to uh, run all these wires to the clear option on these counters, and that's what makes them start over. So they're going to stop. So you got your 7 card, 8 card, 9 card, 10 card. Well, it was not an 11 card, but I think that just messed up. So let's just get this done. Once it's all finished, I'll kind of break it down. So I'll run this up. It doesn't really matter which one you want them to on here because it's all random until it gets to here. So, we already have one there. Let's put this one down. Just FYI, this is advanced wiring, or I would say semi advanced wiring. So, if you don't even know how to put together a battery and power source, this is probably going to be a little bit too confusing for you. Okay, so we should have all those. Alright. <coughs> so now we're going to put together three of these. It goes really quick, so it's the same idea as that over there. So you put all your powers into the bottom here. And this is actually starts at two, so it would be two... Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. But like I said, these are messed up at the moment because of the laggy server. So you make sure that your first one is two, three, four, so and so on. So we're gonna go ahead and run the output into the left branch. The branch out comes down into the XOR switch. Okay. And then power out goes into the right branch, and then power out here goes into the internet counter of the counter. So the pass through goes up, goes over, comes down into the XOR input E. Power out goes into the blocker, and power out of the blocker goes into the power on. And then we'll do it again. Just keep on doing this. Branch out, goes down, goes to input A on the XOR switch, power out into branch 2, power out into the increment counter, pass through of the counter, comes down into input B of the XOR, power out of the XOR, goes into the pass through of the blocker, and then the power of the blocker goes to the top one. Okay, and then uh, if you're if you're wondering about one, one's right here. Obviously, we don't need a tick for one, so one just goes straight up and comes around and goes right into these uh, XOR switches. So this would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. <coughs> 
and then it just daisy chains up again until it's a single or XOR switch and then that goes into an AND switch to provide more power to the system to make sure that those pulses um, uh, have enough power to get to the counters. So everything is mostly put together. Um, I'm not sure the exact, I have 600 power coming in, we're left with 300, so so far this uh, build's costing about 300 power, I'm sure we'll, by the end of it we'll be at about, I would say, this this whole machine's probably going to cost you anywhere from four to 500 power, and that's quite a bit, um, especially on a vanilla server, but uh, we'll go ahead and run the... Uh, power out of this into our power in of the splitter and then we're going to go ahead you can go ahead and uh, figure out the power output but I'm just going to put it to 20 and uh, we're going to go ahead and run the uh, branch up here to 20 because I'm not sure exactly how much it's going to take and I don't, for the sake of time I'm trying not to uh, make this video run for an hour so there we go we have the power there now we're coming into here um, I haven't really fully thought ahead on this but I used to have a switch system but I think I can do it with just buttons so essentially this is, these are going to be your two hit buttons these are going to be your two activation buttons so this will, uh, you hit this and it'll uh, light up this light telling you this player is currently active, but that'll be on the dealer side. So right now I have this set up for dealer, this set up for player one. And when I want player one to play, I'll hit that button. And when I want, uh, and when they're done playing, all I have to do is hit the button again. So, and I have a light to indicate that that player is currently active, just to make it a little bit easier to know uh, when it's on a certain player. Now, I wasn't going to set up four, but I think I've set up three players plus dealer on the last one. Uh, I just didn't feel like setting up that much stuff, but uh, I'm sure if you're, if you're capable enough to, to get this working, I'm sure you're capable enough to figure out how to make multiple players work. So, I have this power coming down into here. This is where the pulses go. So this is the blocking system. Um, so when you choose a certain, let's say we choose this one, I have it set up to a memory switch. I haven't tested this yet, so we're doing this one live. But when you press this button, it switches between inverted and uh, normal output. And when it's inverted, then it's going to go through and block the other player and turn this light on. So that means that the pulse will only come through to this this player's uh, indicator. And then when you hit it again, it'll put it back to the normal output, shutting the light slide off and shutting the blocker off for the other player. And then also it'll send the blocker on so this one, so it'll send this blocker on so this uh, particular button can't hit. So that way you don't play on the wrong wrong player's turn, or if you have a troll, they don't they aren't hitting the hit button while someone else is trying to play. So these are the two outputs. So you want to make sure that your hit button goes to the blocker, and then uh, the output. Um, you're going to have to provide power to the bottom of these uh, buttons to make it through the blocker because they only provide one power when you press them without any power to them. So you need at least. I would say you need at least two power, so one to make it through the blocker and one to make it to that XOR switch. So I'm going to go ahead and run these really quick. So button into blocker, then power out comes down. Let me try this, make this somewhat. Comes over here. will come up 
And I think what we're going to do is put another AND switch in here. Because I don't think it's going to quite have enough power. Um, so we have AND and then splitter. So up through here. And then we'll get a little power going right here. I'm not even going to worry about splitting it in real quick. So, I would say this needs about yeah, one, two, this only needs about, I'd say four power, but we're just going to make it a uh, hundred, because I don't feel like it's worth it. So now, XOR into AND, and then the power out. First one's going to come to clear this counter. And the other one comes over here to clear, to go into this AND switch and clear all of these counters. So if I actually, sorry guys, this is a lot of power. I, I'm hoping this can at least give you an idea. one of these buttons for power. So now oh, I still have it set up yet. Okay, and then we need to give these memory switches power. I apologize, guys. <laughs> so, I would give each one of these memory switches. Let's give them six. So now I should be able to turn them off. Yep. So, see now, these are blocked. This is unblocked. But once I hit, let's say it's uh, player one's turn. I turn that on. This player one will be unblocked if I did this correctly yeah so player one will be unblocked and he can go ahead and hit and then also uh, the player two will be blocked so when he hits it doesn't send a pulse to their number so um, we're going to need to if you want multiple screens for each player, then you're going to have to split it off and provide appropriate power, but for the sake of time, once again, I know we're already running pretty pretty long here, so this power out is going to go, oh gosh, I'm really sorry for this mess, this power out is going to go to the increment counter on uh, we'll call this the dealer, and then this power out is going to go to the internet counter on player one. So I think we should have enough to hear where this should work. And we should watch it. So the count up starts. Here we go. system is working. I think we need to kick these up. 
for some reason to five. Yep, okay, so now we're gonna change this to five. Should have spent a little bit more time figuring this out before we did this. So, okay, now those are all set to five. We got a 13. I have a clear button set right here to clear all the things, but I don't think uh, I have to run here. We need a little bit more power, so we'll give this whatever how much power. Hit the clear. Okay, that clears everything. So now we're ahead again, and it should all work. So now they're counting up. Looks like the number two one. So two counted, we should have a two. Yep. And then hit again. So got a ten that one. And so now I hit this to end the turn. And then I can turn this one on. Hit this one. Like I said, there's some flaws to the system, and I'm not great at explaining things, but you got, you hit the button, this activates, start counting up till 21, and then it sends a pulse through here. I have more, I have 20 power coming up into the AND gate. That which then outputs into a blocker, and then that outputs into a branch plus uh, four splitters, which sends the pulse to all the sets on the RAND gates. The RAND gates then send, if they, if they get a, a green, so if they get a go-ahead and they're not blocked, um, they will go ahead and send a pulse to the increment counter. And then once the increment counter hits five, it'll then send a send power out the top, and the branch out will go to the XORs. They daisy chain together until they all come to one, and they will be put into the block pass through, so no other pulses can make it to any of the RAND switches. the The branch out or power out, I should say, sends one power. To the clear on whatever one wins, it'll send a clear to that counter. So you got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Um, if seven wins, it'll come in. It'll clear this one. Then it so say that this one clears, it'll go to zero and count back up to seven, making seven pulses through here into the system. So. Like I said, if you have any questions, you can send me a, a, a PM through YouTube, Reddit, whatever, and I will do my best to help you out if I'm not working. Um, hopefully in the future, I'll get a little bit better at talking, I'll get a little bit better at video editing, cutting things down. I'm not good at that stuff. Maybe someone can help me out with that. You know, I'll teach you how to do this, you teach me how to do that type thing. Once again, I appreciate you watching. Um, if you want to see the actual uh, original video, um, it's on the Rust Electric channel on YouTube. If you could, just please throw me a subscribe and uh, like my videos and I'll, I'll make more content. Alright, you guys have a good day.